right, let's do some live jetting here. We've got a six inch sewer and there's some sharp edges on that six inch sewer. We're gonna go ahead and set up with the full tiger tail. And you can see I've connected my leader hose here. Sometimes this male female connection might make this whole thing a little too long and straight for say a four inch or a three. But in a six inch, this is a good situation that I can have this safety leader hose on and get that nice warning of orange when my nozzle's getting close to the exit of the pipe. And that again is the biggest safety concern. You do not, under any circumstances, want the jetting nozzle to come out of the line under pressure. So this gives us a nice warning. I'll go ahead and tighten this up. If you're gonna jet directly with the green hose or any hose, um, it's great to put tape marks on there to give you again that warning that the nozzle is getting close and close to that exit and you could get hurt, okay? So, but with this situation, it's a male-female connection on here, so pretty simple. You just thread one into the other. If you keep the male threads in good shape by not dragging your hose end around on the asphalt, you don't need to use any Teflon tape. You just double snug it up and it'll hold pressure. <clears throat> okay, we need to go through the tiger tail guide first. You can see I've got a tether rope tied off here so that when I put the tiger tail on the line, it won't disappear on me. I'll go ahead and shove the hose through and then connect up my nozzle. I'm gonna go ahead and use a reaper nozzle in this situation. I do not recommend just hand tightening your nozzles. They can disappear in the line and premium nozzles are not cheap. So you wanna make sure they stay on there. There we go. If I was going a long way in there, I would definitely double wrench that. So now I can push into the line. I have the curl of the hose kind of facing the direction that the pipe's gonna go. Drop that tiger tail guide in there. Now we showed you the manual operation before and if you're gonna run manual, you turn to panel control and then you can turn your engines on. And it's important again, as soon as you turn the engines on, the pumps are wanting to pump. So any of the stuff you do, even if you're just warming up the engines, there needs to be water in the tank, okay? Otherwise you're running dry and we don't wanna do that. But if I was running manual, I'd go ahead and start. It'd be warming up and then I can use the water on off control to control jetting. But most of you will be using the wireless remote and that's how I'm gonna work here. So I'm gonna switch to remote control with the key. Then I can start up, on button, start on button, start, and give it a moment to warm up while I set my hose. <clears throat> I'm setting the hose reel to unwind. Now I can use my remote to pay out some hose. <clears throat> Pretty handy. I like to get well into the line before I get started. <clears throat> And on the top left, we have the pressure button. That starts moving water through the hose to the nozzle. I'll throttle up, let's do some jetting.
All right, there we go. I just ran the hose out a ways, did some cleaning. You saw I pulled back and I worked a little area by moving the hose back and forth, which would be like working through a root mass or tearing out some grease or whatever it might be. And then as I was rewinding there, again, I rewind slowly because I want to scour the pipe real well. You don't want to pull the hose back too fast and skim over your cleaning task, especially if you're moving debris. And um, then, of course, when I saw the, my marker, the orange leader hose, or if it was a tape mark on my green hose, um, that gave me that warning to stop. And I like to throttle down first and then hit the jetting off button or the pressure off button. You don't have to. In an emergency stop situation, you can just kill the pressure, you can kill the engines, and call that an e-stop. But in typical mode, I'm going to throttle down first. I'm going to stop the jetting. And then if I'm done, turn the engines off as I did. Being that we have a electrically powered hose reel, I can wind up my reel and whatnot, even with the engine off. So I can pull this up. Just gotta watch that joint going through the reel and then pull everything out. And then I can secure the area from and put away my jetting tools. Okay, now that we're putting everything away, let's talk about hose management. Okay, jetting hose of all types pretty much has a fiber braid inside, which is great. It makes it lightweight versus like a steel braid of, of a hydraulic hose. But it, most jetting hoses, all jetting hoses are susceptible to kinks. Okay, and what we want to avoid is letting it get into a tight curl like this because most of the kinking that happens with jetting hose happens when you're winding the hose up not necessarily when you're going into the pipe. Okay, so let's just say with your wireless remote control, you'll be working on the roof, away from the jetter. This was an ideal, easy place to jet. But a lot of times you'll be jetting well away from the machine and you're gonna stretch out a lot of hose. So when you're winding that hose up, what I like to do is, whether it's 100 feet, 200 feet, or 50 feet, or even 20 feet, I like to lay it out in a nice big loop. Okay, so this will avoid a curling problem because I could have my back to the hose and I'm winding up and if it catches on something and has a curl, it's going to kink, right? So we just want to stretch out in a nice big loop. I might stand on the end and then I can wind up the hose, keeping it in a nice controlled big loop and wind it up and I don't have kinking problems. And again, we want to avoid kinks because any kink will become a weak point and that's where the hose can rupture. And a hose rupturing just becomes a nozzle a lot of times and that's right there going through your hands. So this is very important from a safety point of view. Avoid kinks and again, always inspect the jetting hose for chafes and cuts and service it and replace it, uh, replace the hose end if necessary. All right, there you have it the training sessions for the Eagle 300 and Eagle 600 trailer mounted jetters. Really appreciate your purchase. Appreciate you choosing Jetters Northwest. Um, again, take a look at YouTube. Our Jetters Northwest YouTube channel has a lot of videos that go well beyond what we've talked about today. Some real specific stuff as to nozzles and applications. But again, if you have any questions or thoughts or need an idea, give us a call at 877-901-1936 or email info at jettersnorthwest.com and we also have a shopping site online shop.jettersnorthwest.com covers all kinds of nozzles accessories and some smaller machines for special uses we want to be here to help you solve your jetting needs again this is jonesy jetters northwest for the team get out there and get jetting